Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is Go Again, a fabulous video cast covering the trading card game Flesh and Blood. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! Hello everyone, welcome to Dice Commando, and go again, a fabulous cast. I'm Andrew with you here as always, and happy, happy release day. Crucible of War releases today, actually technically at the time I'm shooting this, tomorrow in the US, but it is already out already in New Zealand and other parts of the world, and we're starting to see stuff pouring in, lots of cool pictures, and so on. So what I want to do today in anticipation for my personal release here this weekend is go through some of the cards I'm looking for, some of the stuff that I think is going to be super cool in the next set. So that's what I'm talking is my personal excitement. Hey guys, so thank you for joining me again. So Crucible of War, or CRU, is out. That's right, I'm I'm done fighting the battle to call it COW. Obviously, it, you know, on the cards itself, it has the acronym CRU, so that is, that is the acronym for Crucible of War, but I had my fun calling it COW up until the release, but I'll, I'll let that die. So what we're doing today, I just went through the cards that we have seen as of the time of this shooting. Uh, there are still, like, the, the full spoiler page has not been updated, I should say, the full set page on fabdb or fabtcg.com has not been updated yet. So I haven't seen 100% of the cards, although I think at this point we've seen the majority of it. There may be one or two hidden gems in there, but all right, so I have, I, I think it's 18, 16, something like that images that I want to go through. So we're not going to talk for a year and a half on each one of them, but uh, just basically starting at the top and, and going on down on some stuff that I think is pretty a pretty big deal for for this set all right so skullhorn this is this is i think the only card i actually i know this is the only card i have for brute uh, i think this one's pretty cool destroy it draw a card and then discard a random card go again that's um i, I think that really helps him a lot it's, it's i mean it's good that it's being destroyed because that would be bonkers good with brute if it was an every turn type of effect um but you know, it's I mean that's that's in line with a lot of the other equipment we see. Uh, it does have our carrying barrier too, so it you know can hang out until you use it. Um, but I, I like this. I, I think that most brute players are gonna gonna put this in. I mean it, it's a head, so it doesn't compete with anything else that we're seeing. So um, I think I think this one's pretty good. I think we're gonna see a lot of it, a lot of it for brute. And that's you know that's kind of where my head's at on a lot of these guys is the stuff we're going to see seeing a lot of the stuff that's I mean you guys. You know, for those of you who watch, you know I'm a utility guy. I like stuff that we just see a lot, does its job, sticks with us. That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for here. All right, so next is the Sledge of Anvilheim. This is the new hammer weapon for the Guardian. This baby's good. Four for six. I mean, I, I see Blitz stacks being built around this and around this along with maybe one or two big attacks in there. But this is this one's pretty... This one's pretty awesome, I think. I mean, I I don't know how much more there is to say on this. We kind of already talked about it already on the weapons cast, but um, I don't know. I, I think for I, I think Guardians playing this and going going big with it, right? I mean, that's because you can play pummel, and I mean, there's other stuff too. But I, I I think this one's really cool. All right, next for Guardian, I also have Mangle. For so again, I you know the problem I have with Guardian, or not not the problem I have, but one of the things that doesn't fit my personal play style with Guardian is how expensive everything is. Um, I mean, the Guardian basically just throws out money and swings for one big one and hopes it lands, right? And that's certainly what this card is doing. Um, but I do like the effect on this. I mean, four for eight, if it deals four more damage to a hero, destroy target equipment they control with a minus one counter on it. So it's not completely insane. 
I think it's really I think it's a really well done card um, because what it's remember most of the equipment that has battle worn versus blade break is some of the more useful equipment. So if you're down or playing against a guardian, I think you have to really think about how you use said equipment. Um, and I, I think this is, I, I really like the design of this card, not just because what I like, A, I think the card's good, um, but I also really like the design on this card. I think this is top-notch design by LSS because there's play strategy on both sides now, right? Because if it doesn't have a counter on it, they can't destroy. Plus, you can try and keep them off the dealing four damage because it's not just this hit, it's dealing four damage. So there's a lot of stuff going on here that makes it very interesting during the game to try to keep track of. All right, next is, this guy is super exciting, right? Benji, the Piercing Wind, uh, in his lore, he's like a little little boy, but action attack action cards you control two or less cannot be defended by cards from hand. So when he was spoiled, uh, or when Usur saw him, I believe it was during the Team Covenant cast, I uh, put up a joke on Facebook that's like, blue scar for a scar, came out from beer glasses everywhere. And I mean, that's exactly what this is. Like this guy opens up a completely new type of play style where you're actually shooting for the you know I mean usually like when we're going through this unless you need the pitches for resources you're playing the red version right so this guy this guy's really neat he's really really neat um, and then of course he has the once per turn effect when attack action card you control hits your next attack this turn gains plus one right note that is next attack so it's not just attack action right it could be the weapons and we've seen the new ninja weapons have their raised. You, I think the way to play them is you go one Kadachi with it, right? You kind of split up the two weapons. Um, but there's a there's a lot of really cool stuff here. There's there's a lot. This this guy's. I I mean I, I'm not saying I've got him all figured out yet, but I think there's some really interesting stuff that's going to happen with this guy. And remember, he's blitz only, or because he's young, right? Uh, he does only have the 17 health though, um, which actually. Hurt, helps him with the aforementioned scar for scar. So I, I think this guy's really neat. Um, the next three are a ninja combo um, that is bonkers good, I, I, I think. At least on the surface, it looks bonkers good to me, right? So it starts with Soul Bead Strike, which is 0 for 4, which is pretty damn good, right? I mean, 0 for 4, that's pretty damn good, right? If it hits, it gets go again. So it does have to hit to start your combo. But, the, I mean, isn't this card amazing? I think this card's pretty good, right? And then it leads into Crane Dance for zero combo. If it, if Solby's Strike was the last attack this chain, Dance gains plus one, go again. So it doesn't matter if this one hits or not, as long as it's being comboed into, it gets go again. And it can't be defended by attack action cards with attack greater than the number of chain links you control. So it can't be defended by, right, so let's say you open with bead, you go with this. It now cannot be defended by a two by a card that has attack of two or greater, which is, I mean, there's there's a lot going on there, but that's pretty limiting, right? I mean, there's not a ton of people who are going to be on a regular basis playing cards with base two attack. Um, I mean, that's pretty good and then and again again it has go again so you you've again you've you spent zero now yes you had to hit on your first attack here but you've still spent zero this round and then you go into heron's flight which is also a zero right so that's right every single card in this combo chain has zero cost combo if crane dance was the last attack heron's flight gains plus two attack and you choose attack action or non-attack action and Slight can only be defended by cards of the chosen type. I mean, that's pretty... I mean, that's... I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, don't get me wrong. It's still good because it's limiting. It may be because by the time it's the third in the chain and they already dumped early, it may not always pay off. Um, but, it, I mean, it's there and it certainly helps. But, I mean, at the very least, it's zero for five if it's the last card in the chain. I mean, I, I think... Maybe I'm complete, and if I am, please let me know. But if I'm missing something, or maybe I'm missing something, but this combo chain seems crazy bonkers, right? I mean, yeah, you play some attack reactions now with Ninja, which maybe you didn't do as much before, but I mean, 
that's an incredible, incredible combo. Anyway, I don't want to belabor that too much, but let me know. I mean, let me know if I'm missing something that's not as incredible as I think it is. All right, moving into the warrior stuff. So Courage of Blade Hold, this is the warrior chest. Definitely replacing uh, what I was playing already, which was uh, uh, Fluster Fist. Vest of the first, no, sorry, Vest of the First Fist was the one I was playing. Um, and I kind of talked about why in a previous episode as well, so check that out. But action, destroy this equipment. Your sword attacks cost one less this turn. Go again. Yeah. I mean, that's, it works for Dawnblade. It works for the Centauri Sabres. This is just good. Um, it does have a new uh, version of defense where you put a minus one counter on and if the minus one counters make it zero, then it breaks. So it's like a it's like a mid between it's like a hybrid between blade break and um, battle worn, right? Um, but I think you're probably breaking this pretty early. But I mean, this is this is just an incredible, incredible card. And yes, it's a majestic, but this is an incredible card. Um, we'll have to see if this ends up being one of the majestics that they short print because you only need one, right? You don't need three of these, right? So I, I'm betting this will be one of the short print ones if we end up getting those data points at any point. Um, but this is really good. All right, Spoils of War. So yes, another Majestic. I mean, yes, Majestics, I get it, right? But Spoils of War for one, your next weapon attack gains plus two and go again. Now, do you know what? There's no chain with this, right? There's not a yellow pitch and a blue pitch version. Um, but your next weapon attack gains plus two and go again. Um, you're right, you compare that to all Splash Up um, Driving Blade real quick, which is kind of the warrior common it's the it's the more accessible more obtainable version of what warrior needs for the dawn blade um it's just i mean aside from the fact that it's a common welcome to wrath it's just not good compared i mean this this card does that right um plus it has the bonus of whenever you hit you can create some copper tokens which you can do some other things with with card interactions and of course itself has go again but this card is just great i mean there's I don't really, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I really need to spend much more time on it, but this is fantastic, in my opinion, um, because for Dawnblade, it doesn't need to hit, right, to get, because that's the thing with, with Thea, um, oh, well, actually, actually, I take that back, because with Thea, it needs to hit to be able to attack with it, oh, so, okay, fair enough, maybe this is better with the Sabres, now that I'm talking it out, but, but still, this card's really good, I mean, this, this card's really good. All right, and the last one for the warrior I have is hit and run. Uh, your next weapon attack this turn gains go again. And if you've attacked with a weapon this turn, your next attack this turn gains plus three. So this one's kind of a multifunctional card. Um, in order to get it to really sing and get both out of it, um, A, I don't know that you're doing that, right? Because if you're trying to get both out of it, you would have already had to have attacked, and then you're attacking again, and then you're trying to count on being able to play another card hence the go again right so plus you had to play this card right so that's I mean maybe maybe right I, I do think that if this if you're going to do it if you're going to pull off the dream here it's definitely with the Centauri Sabres I don't think it's going to happen with Dawnblade um, but this I mean this is this is good I, I just like the multifunctional right I mean it's basically like you know we see cards like that it's like choose one all the time that's kind of what this is, but if you sequence it right, you can get both. I mean, I and there, there's there's a whole cycle of these type of cards in this set, um, and I, I really like I really like that. All right, so the only one, so I, I admit I have a hard time with mechanologists uh, just because I, I haven't really played with it, um, but this one seems obviously good to me. The plasma purifier. I mean, it's more items, right, and remove so action if there's it's they got the typical steam counter thing so if it'll run you put a steam counter on it if it doesn't have any and then you can remove the steam counter to give a pistol plus one until the end of turn right so the whole point of dash's pistol is doing multi-attacks this isn't giving it plus one for one attack it's giving it plus one until the end of the turn this thing's really good right i mean it's it's really good i i don't know what else to say because you can keep those steam counters on there for the turn. I mean, that that's the whole Dash's whole thing, right, is you get the steam counters up and then you just have a wallop turn, and this fits right into it. Um, I, I think it's great. All right, let's get into Ranger. So, again, I, I'm loving my Ranger right now. I, I just love it. I'm not very good at it, but I love it. 
and this card is crazy good, right? So this card would be fine at zero with just reload. Like, it, it would be fine, right? Uh, never, now note that it's yellow, right? So you do get a two-pitch out of it, which is fine for the Ranger cost curve. Um, until end of turn, arrows you control gain. If it hits, they discard a card, and your opponent discards a card. Whoa! I mean, this this is, this is the best Ranger. I, I think this is the best Ranger card. I mean, yes, the big attacks do nasty, nasty things, right? Like Red in the Ledger, or the new one we saw. Uh, I'll flash it up. It's like Recumbent. Uh, I, I, for, I forget. It starts with an R. Um, but, I, I mean, both of those are really good, and I'm not taking anything away from those, but this card's insanely good. Like, this, this card is really, really, really good. Because, think. I mean, th- think about it this way, right? If they take the hit, they lose a card. Or, if they overpitched a block, then they lost at least a card. A- extra, I mean. Right? So, I think that when... I think that if I poison the tip, I th- depending on what I'm hitting with, right? But when I poison the tip, I think the best thing for you to do is just take it and only lose one card as opposed to try and defend it and then maybe get over attack and lose another. I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see how that plays out. And of course, there's different gameplay scenarios there, but like... This is crazy good, and I don't even think it's best when used with, like, the big attacks, right? I think it's best when used with, like, a normal arrow, right? Like a four or five just normal arrow, because, right, the, the others, like, once you start stacking negative effects at some point, like, you start getting negative return on investment there, if it makes sense. Like, it would almost be better to one turn hit with Red in the Ledger and clip, clip, cripple them that way, and then the next turn cripple them again, as opposed to just erasing. I don't know it's it's the argument in this game is like is a time walk better, or are two crippled turns better? I, I don't know. I, and again, it's it's gameplay scenario. And yes, it'll probably depend on who you're playing and what hero and what format. Even I grant you that. Um, anyway, this card, stupid good. I mean, this card is stupid good, right? So that's, I mean, hey, exciting. Thank you, thank you guys for giving me my ranger that. Uh, all right, so. This, uh, the next two cards are interesting, and we haven't seen the third in the cycle yet, or at least I, I'm assuming there's going to be a third in the cycle. It's kind of interesting because they're, they're rares, which would usually imply that they would have a red, a yellow, and a blue pitch version of each. They don't, um, but there's a trap, right? So there's a red trap, and then there's a yellow trap. And I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be a blue trap. There's a space for it on the spoiler page, or on the FAB uh, TCG uh, set page. So I'm assuming that's how this works, um, which is kind of cool because we haven't seen that yet. Maybe we're seeing it in this set. Uh, but it's a trap, right? So for zero, so it's a defense reaction that caused zero. Great. With four, great. Um, the only thing this is missing is reload, right? I mean, which, I mean, take cover. They already have that. So hit effects don't trigger this chain link unless the attacking hero pays one. Right? So even if they do hit, they come over the top on your defense reaction. If they're trying to do something to you, they have to pay one, which either hurts their ability to get out, get stuff out of their go again. Because um, I right, think about that, right? So if this hits gain go again or something like that, means that they would have to pay one to get that go again, which means they might be spending the dollar they were counting on getting for their go again. Does, does that make sense, right? So even if they do end up hitting, this makes them still lose. I mean, except for the fact that it damage, right? But um, this is really cool. This is really cool. Uh, the next trap is Pitfall Trap. Uh, deal two damage to the attacking hero unless they pay one. Right. So this is just a defense reaction trap. Zero for three, and unless they pay one, they get take two. Yes, please. Like just yes, please. This this is great too. Right. I mean, uh, this uh, right now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to jam all this good stuff into my ranger deck. I mean, that's because. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just fantastic. Um, and then again, we'll assume there's a blue card coming. Uh, moving on to Runeblade, the only card that popped to me was this one. A, because I really like the art. Um, I don't know why I like the art. Like, there's kind of a lot of stuff going on in the back. I get it. I think, like, she's kissing him, and then he's going to get eaten. I get it. Anyway, um, if you have dealt or deal arcane damage this turn, consuming vol- volition gains if this hits a hero, they discard a card. Right, so kind of hitting back to uh, what I liked about the Ranger card, to be honest with you, right? Um, it's kind of the kind of the same effect, and like 
if you have dealt or deal arcane damage. When you're rune blade and you're popping your rune chant tokens when you're playing rune bait actions, like aren't you pretty much almost in 99% of the situations have guaranteed to ping one at least, right? So that's that's pretty neat. Uh, one for four is not bad. Uh, but the discard thing. So I, I mean, I, I think this guy pretty much a lot of it speaks to kind of the same strategy that I was using for the same argument on poison the tip. Um, this is really, I, I think this is a really good, to, and it's only, it's a common too, right? I think it's a really good tool for the Rune Blade toolkit. All right, so this is the only one I have for Wizard. I'll be honest, I, I don't, I didn't see anything in this set, at least as of now, I didn't see anything in this set that really popped for Wizard, except for this one, right? Because whenever you play a card with an effect that deals arcane damage, pay one, if you do that effect deals that much damage and then this blows up at the end of the round so again with with uh forked lightning right I'll, I'll, pu I'll put it up just to confirm right but that's the one where it deals the same card deals arcane damage twice my understanding of the ruling on that is if you buff that card it hits twice right so increasing that you could pay one and fire two shots at plus one is my understanding on this so this seems like something that wizard would play if they're playing that card um, I mean, it's it's still one damage, but I think it's I think it's again with my understanding of how that card works, I think that's the way you want to do to do that. Okay, uh, going into generics, this card really popped in me. Snag zero. It's a generic instant attack action cards can't gain attack from their own effects or the effects of attack reaction cards this turn. That's pretty cool, right? So just for zero. Now, yes, it's card from hand with no actual defense. But, right, play this light. I mean, think about Ninja, right? They get, I mean, they get inherent with their combos. They get inherent stacks on bonuses from just the card itself. So you throw this down against Ninja, and it really hurts them, I think, for the turn. Yes, it costs you a card, which in theory you're getting three for from a defense standpoint, right? If it was just some, any other card, right? But this could potentially be worth way more than three, Um or maybe they just stop their turn and they don't want to go against go against it. I, I don't know, right? But either way, I, I think this card's really, really pretty strong. And again, yes, yeah, it's majestic. But I, I think this card's pretty good. Uh, next, this one's just a rare, but really popped at me. Reinforce the line. So again, it's an instant, but target defending attack action card gains plus four, right? So it's, I mean, again, it's an instant. So it's a defense, it's basically a defense reaction that plays outside of the react windows. Um, which is, I don't know, it, I just, it's, it's, it's interesting, right? Um, and I mean, zero for four. And granted, you would have had to have defended with a defending attack action card, right? But I mean, you're doing, I think that a lot. So I don't know, I just, I just think this is kind of a cool card. Um, all right, so that's it for the interesting cards of the set. Um, I did have a couple notable notes that I wanted to go through. I've got, I've got, I think three. So, uh, Data Doll Mark Two. She's the young hero. So, do note she only has three intellects, right? That's. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, but whenever a me mechanologist item with cost two or less is put in your banish zone from your deck, put into the arena, right? That's insane with boost. Um, yeah, I don't. Know. I, I think that's really good. So we'll we'll see we'll see how that plays out. Um, I mean, the three and Alexa big deal. I don't know, but she's she's interesting with how I understand with how I understand mechanologists. That's that's very interesting. Definitely gives a different play angle. Um, or does it actually? Wouldn't you still be using the pistol because you're getting the items? Oh, maybe you are. Okay. Well, well. Leave in the comments if, leave in the comments. Let me know if you're a mechanologist person. Let me know. All right. Next is Kasai Centauri Cell Sword. So we'll go into her text in a minute. But the first thing I noticed on the Blitz heroes is they have subtypes, right? So it's Kasai Centauri Cell Sword. If you go back and you look at the other young heroes. They don't have subtypes. It's just Kano, or it's just Azalea, as opposed to Azalea, comma whatever. 
right, or Kana, comma, whatever. So it's interesting that um, these young heroes in this set do have that. I mean, it, it matters nothing from a gameplay standpoint, but it's very interesting. So for her, your second sword attack each turn costs one less. That's crazy. Or I, I mean, it's not crazy. It's just good. Um, you're obviously using her with the Centauri blades, which, I mean, makes sense. It's in her name, right? Uh, but at the beginning of your end phase, if you have attacked two or more times with weapons this turn, which I think you're always going to be because costs one less, and Warrior doesn't have any problem giving weapons go again that do have to hit, though. Um, you're creating copper token for each weapon attack to hit, which gives you some options. Again, we haven't seen a ton yet that I'm aware of that interact with copper other than the, the Skinner guy. But um, she's really neat. I think... Um, I think that a lot of the warrior tricks will hold up, but play different with the two smaller swords. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see. I, I think she's really, I think she's going to be really good in Blitz. I think, I think. And then Twinning Blade. So this is an inch. I'm having a hard time figuring out if this is, it doesn't seem very good. Now hear me out, right? Obviously what it does is good, but I don't, think you need it um, because what it does basically is it's an attack react that lets you use your sword again if it misses I mean that's that's basically what's happening here right and and yes I'm thinking primarily Dawnblade here um, so I, and, and I guess you're using it on the cell sword if or sorry you're, you're using it on the Centauri blades if you can't otherwise give it a go again I get that um, it just seems bad value for a lot of the other stuff that warrior has because warriors kind of set up to dump on and hit and then get something extra I mean that's kind of really what warrior does and in this case it's not really helping you so like I said I understand what this card's supposed to do um, and I understand the so let me remember phrase I understand what it does I understand the value of it I just don't know that in a situation now where we're actually having to kind of choose card slots, I don't know that this one cuts it, um, which is fine. Not every card has to. I mean, that's, you can only get so many cards. In your deck. I don't. So that's that's why I, I I am very curious what other people think on this one, because when I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, that's awesome. And I thought about it. And I was like, well, actually, I don't know that it is, because um, like I'd I'd rather be playing some of the other cards we looked at right that just automatically give go again um, but but it's free it is free um, but I don't know so that is oh yeah so that, just a reminder this Centauri Saber sorry I should have showed that earlier but that's I mean that's that is what it is right so um, yeah that's that's it. it takes us to skull horn all the way back around um, yeah so again happy release day please enjoy cracking your packs um, or sitting on them for alpha print run, if that such thing, a little joke there. But no, okay, anyway, so we've gone way longer than our typical go again cast, but hey, we're just sitting here talking and having fun. So thank you very much for joining me. Let me know how are your polls looking, what are you thinking, what are you excited about playing. Uh, some of the new guys look really cool. Um, again, I'm not saying that if I didn't cover it, I'm not saying it's a bad card. Like, there's a lot of stuff out there um, that seems really, really good. Uh, this is just the stuff that piqued, piqued my interest when I was going through it. Very initially, and again, we're we're seeing this all kind of in a pseudo vacuum at this point, like we've seen most of it, but we're still going through and figuring out. So, let me know what you're thinking. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm right. Tell me where you agree. Tell me where you don't. Um, but either way, please enjoy your weekend. If nothing else, guys, go commando.